The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the church at Galatia, stated, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I live by faith. Faith. Faith is trusting in something or someone to carry us through. We put our faith in something to sustain us, something to hold us together when life is difficult, something to lift us up when things seem to be going sideways or falling apart. We all live by faith. We all put our hope and our trust, our confidence, our assurance in something. Paul says, I live by faith in the Son of God. I live by faith in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. I live by faith in the accomplishments of God become man, in the person Jesus. I live by faith in the Son of God who gave his life for me. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and died for me. So powerful words by Paul. He recognizes in that passage that righteousness does not come through the law, that one is not made right with God through external religion, through an attempt to be good in and of ourselves, but our right relationship with God comes in and through putting our faith in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I live by faith the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus lived perfectly and in his perfect life was the only one who could lay down his life for others who have failed to live perfectly, who have failed to live in right relationship with God and right relationship with others. And so Jesus has done this for us. Romans chapter 5, we read this. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we are made right by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand and we boast and our hope of sharing the glory of God. Not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. This life of faith, in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. It's not always an easy life. Sometimes it will involve suffering. The life of faith will sometimes involve difficulty. Paul had noted in the passage in Galatians that we alluded to that he says, I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. I have been crucified with Christ. I have given up a control of my life for I found the reason for living. And it's not found in myself. It's not found in religion. It's not found in some form of self-righteousness, nor is it found in the abandonment of the pursuit of righteousness altogether. But it's found in grace. And the grace provided us in Jesus Christ. 
I have been crucified with Christ. And I found my life now in him. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And this faith might call me to endure difficult things. But these things produce character and character produces hope and hope does not disappoint. Because as we journey, God's love is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit that he has given us. We know the very love of God for us in Christ. In 1 John, we read that here in his love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the sacrifice for our sins. The wages of our sin was laid upon Christ. And he died, and he resurrected in the power of God. We put our faith in him, and we know that very love in and through the Spirit that he has given us. In verse 6 of Romans 5, For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, we will be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more surely, having been reconciled, we will be saved by his life. And more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. While we were still weak, while we were still denying God, while we were still living without any pursuit of righteousness, while we were living for self, self-righteous perhaps, or abandoning all righteousness altogether, Christ died for us. He laid down his life. He gave his life. In John's Gospel, the words of Jesus are noted that he said, No one takes my life from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. And Jesus laying down his life as the power of God to take it up again. And he has. He has resurrected. And in and through his death, and in and through his life, we have the power to find righteousness and to be reconciled to God, to be made right with God, and subsequently to then live into that and to be made right with one another. There is an account in Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, where we have somebody coming and approaching Jesus. Mark chapter 10, verse 17. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, and knelt before him and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Or what must I do to know God? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus looked at him and loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go sell what you own, give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away sad or grieving, for he had many possessions. I live by faith. We all do. This young man's faith was in two things, and one more paramount than the other. One was his 
anticipated ability to be self-righteous. All of these I've kept since my youth. I've done what I could under the law to be right before God. In one of the other Gospels, we have it recorded that he asked, What do I still lack? What am I missing? I'm living by faith that my deeds of goodness are good enough to know God and enter into the kingdom of heaven, but something is missing. Something doesn't seem right. And what it was, was he knew that he did not love God with all of his heart, mind, strength, and soul. To hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one and you shall love him with all that you've got. Something's missing because that's not true of me. And Jesus looked at him and loved him and said, you lack one thing, go sell everything that you have. Come, follow me. It says that the young man went away sad without peace, for he had great wealth. He loved, he had put his faith in, his riches. Paul, I have been crucified with Christ. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What do you put your faith in? What do you trust in? What do you hold on to? The invitation in, through, in and through the life, death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ is for us to put our faith in his finished work. But this faith calls us to more than just heaven when we die. It calls us to a life in the kingdom of God here and now. With the very love of God poured into our hearts by the spirit that he has given us. Upon or following his ascension. We all live by faith of some sort. Faith in riches. Faith in self-righteousness faith in our ability or accomplishments, faith in the securities that we may have acquired in this life. Paul lived by faith in the Son of God who loved him and gave himself for him. Jesus loves you and he has given himself for you. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Do you believe this? Do you believe that he has loved you? Despite your self-righteousness or despite your abandonment of righteousness altogether, he looks at you and he loves you. And he has given himself for you that you might know peace with God in and through his finished work, not your own ability or accomplishment. And would you live by faith in him, which means to follow him with reckless abandon, to put your hope in what it is that life will mean and look like as you respond to the call Come, follow me. Would you come to follow Jesus, the one who has loved you and given himself for you? To his praise and his glory. Amen.